He was religious. He was observing Torah. He was keeping the laws. What is the problem? And the rabbis couldn't explain it. Then she came to Tanad Beliao and he asked her, let me ask you a question. When you were in Ida, were he touching you? She said, no, he never touched me. We kept the laws, everything was okay. And then he asks her, and, um, and uh, when you were supposed to go to sleep together, did you sleep in one bed? So she explained him that, you know, in Bukhara, in Russia, not always we used to have beds. They used to put jaw. Jaw means to put big uh, blankets on the floors from wall to wall. He slept on one corner, she slept on one, but it was one. There was no separation. Mm. So that's how it was. And the rabbi explained him, you know, especially in those days, a rabbi used to be somebody that teaches the way he lives to his students. That's how it, the way it's supposed to be. And if he teaches you wrong, that's the problem. That was probably the mistake that he did, that he taught wrong to his students, that when people are sleeping, they should be sleeping in two separate beds, not the same, but I'll come to the beds too. But a story from the Gemara. So from, from, this, mid, from this Midrash we learn that uh, this prohibition of touch and coming close and any kind of affection, very, very strong. Uh, sometimes people come to funny situations where they don't know how to, what to do. So you're outside or you're next to people. Can I give him the phone? Can I give him the keys? Can I give him the baby? What should I do when this I'm outside? And, 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 and people back. don't know what to do. And so some say, if I, so it's public, it's easier, and this and that. Yeah. The truth is you have to learn how to do these things natural way. So people around won't even pay attention. So you tell your baby, can you hold this key for a second? You're one of your kids. And, and then uh, your husband asks for this key. Or, or you ask him, can you give it to daddy, please? So nobody pays attention. And it's not weird. Oh, why did you drop the key in the middle of the way? And, and what exactly happens here? Or when you have people, grown-up people. Uh, so the same, the same way you try to do it uh, in a way that nobody will, will pay attention. Can you hold this for a second? And then after a second, you tell her, can you give it to my husband? I think he needs that. Uh, that she won't pay attention. She won't know. So you, you have to try to think how to do it in a way. Another Hashem, as we learn about mikvah, I'll talk to you about this too. It's sometimes weird uh, circumstance that you don't know how, to, how you're supposed to go a certain night and you have people over and you don't know how to do it so people won't understand. There's always ways how to do, you know, in a natural way. So, Vezal Hashem will talk about that. Um, so, um, so, because a touch is a very strong way of feeling, so we have to be careful not even holding hands. And if you see it, it's going to be hard for you. You have to find ways how to do it so that not in a hurting way to your husband and not in making fun of him that he doesn't know the laws or, or, or any of those sort of things. Take a walk outside and usually outside you're not showing affection. Uh, you know, you can learn to get a book. You can, there's all kind of other activities that you could do that will prevent him, you know, to come close to you. And maybe you can uh, solve together a crossword. Maybe you can, so many things that husband and wife can do together. Just find ways. Always, you, you have no way of knowing what he likes, what he doesn't like. See it, talk about this, discuss it. And there's um, Hashem. Hashem will help you and it's going to be, it's not going to be so hard. Um, so if you have to uh, carry, let's say, all this table from one end of, of the, the room to the other. You cannot do it when you're on it. Even though it's a big thing and you have no way of touching each other. Because you hold the same thing together. I'm feeling you, you're feeling me. Mm. You know? It could be like, um, you know, we're holding the same uh, phone or, or, or the same pan, cup of tea, or even that table or a huge rope that when one is you know, making a vibration, the other one he feels it. Well, why is that a problem? Hmm? Why does God make because that a problem? Because nobody else in the house, just the two of you are adults, and everyone else is little. No one else can help you to do this. And you need that thing to be done. Right. So, so Hashem wants you to be creative. 
to see what other ways you could do, you could find <laughs> to <laughs> it makes <laughs> it <laughs> But you know, life teaches us so much. You know, you're not you're not a parent until you become a parent. And once you become a parent, you have to learn so many things and you have to be creative. This is the beauty of life. This is how we learn. Otherwise we, we don't learn. That's 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 good. So um, you have to take a carriage together, you know, a stroller together. So some say that, you know, usually husbands, they do have the strength to, to, to take it down the steps or something. So you can leave it up to him. And if it, if even, uh, as I said before, sometimes people say that in public it's okay, but um, um, if you can find, you know, somebody else to help him or, or this... You know, Fine, on the spot, somebody else, you spot somebody, you ask him to do that, I want to three, and it's done, and nobody paid attention. So uh, it is possible. He cannot touch, or you cannot touch, his clothing, even though you don't touch him, as he's still wearing them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because, uh, and, um, or, or to, to blow some air so that some, some dirt or something, uh, this kind of fine things that in a certain situation, imagine to yourself this Queen Yoyachin, right, with his wife, sitting in a, or standing in a dungeon, doing these small little things will arouse both of them, even, even they don't do anything yet, right? So uh, a couple being alone, maybe just right after the wedding, they're so excited. Mm -hmm. Every small little thing can, can, can uh, ignite them. Every small thing. Let's say when you're vacationing. Let's say when you're... You have no way of knowing which kind of circumstance you're going to stand. So these are the gates that we have to prevent this kind of thing. Yes, maybe on a regular basis, on a regular month, it's not going to happen. But sometimes it will. So if you don't practice this law, you don't know. And so it's very important to, to know this thing. Uh, a here says, let's say you're holding a baby, uh, one month old baby on your on your Z, he cannot come and kiss the baby as you holding him on top of your because he's coming so close to you you almost feel one another right these are uh, things that we are be careful with uh, be careful with um, uh, giving a baby from one to another as long as the baby is very very small you still have to be careful. Many times a woman is not done anyway after she is giving birth. But even after she went to the mikvah, the baby is still too small, cannot go on his own to, to, on his, own to his daddy to pick him up. So, but um, once he's getting older, he's six months or older, he sits on your lap and you play with him. His father comes from work. He sees his father, he gets so excited, he pushes himself towards the father. Then they, some say it's not a problem, the father picks him up because already babies. You know, the power. Down. He himself goes to the to the father. It's not uh, exactly the mother. So, uh, this are uh, um, this is about um, so handing things. We have to be careful. If you want to give him this cup of tea, you're going to uh, put it on the table next to him. And he's going to pick it up himself. Practicing a little bit, and he will understand. You know, it's, uh, in the beginning, it's weird, like what's happening, but. He's going to learn it, and it's not going to be so strange anymore after he gets used to that. Um, and just imagine how many people, like a percentage of people, that keeps this. Who knows? Percentage of people, how many people keep it? I don't because know. I think it's like too, too, too strict. <laughs> it's too strict. Yeah. Well, many times when people give one thing to another, okay. Usually, I practice it with bread. I give her uh, a mm -hmm. cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And they make her touch me. Uh, well, what right. does it make to you yeah. when, when you touch, touch me? Yeah? Right. You touch me, you feel right. me. Right. But I'm not your husband. Right. I'm not a man. Right. So it, this touch doesn't do anything right. to her. But if it's her husband on the other side, and he's touching her, and it's not allowed, these are the days that it's the hardest for them to keep right. because they're not allowed. And when they're not allowed, More. this, is, uh, this yeah. is when they want to do it, right? Sure. So... We are careful even with these kind of uh, little details. I have a question. Yes. About uh, center plate and eating, mm -hmm. sharing. How is that? Yeah. Are you yeah. going to get to it? Next okay. thing. Achilah shulchan We're eating, okay. Okay, eating on one table. 
Why we have this problem with eating in one table? What's the big deal eating in one table? Why people cannot eat together for one plate? People date. Mm -hmm. They share. What's the big deal? Let me ask you. If you having a bag of chips, would you share with anybody in the street? Mm -hmm. Why not? Strange. <laughs> you don't share with strange people. Who would you share with? Friends, family. Why? They're close, you know them. You feel like one. Yeah? Yeah. When you share food with somebody, is only with close people. You don't share food with enemies usually, or with strange people, right? When people go dating, what they do? Usually. People share food. Yeah. <laughs> they go to a restaurant. I want to ask you, why this type of activity? <laughs> why not going to ride a bike or, or, or hiking? Or like that? Why they go to a restaurant? Uh, because food brings them closer. Close. Yeah. When you eat together, you feel close. That's how it goes. When businessmen, they want to make business with one another, usually they invite each other to a business meal in a restaurant. They go together. There are two strange people. They don't know each other yet. So they're not close. Once they order the food, he says, oh, you ordered this, oh, where are you coming from, where is this? With this ordering food, they start conversation, and this conversation begins, they're eating together. Bukharian people, they do it beautiful. You're invited to a Bukharian family, they open a table. They bring wine and alcohol to them. They get so close, they, they, they love it, it, it it's beautiful. They make you eat their food, you eat, you thank them, you get... The, they say that, uh, that when people drink wine and some alcohol, their heart is opening up towards one another. And that's what eating together makes to people, right? Therefore, because eating together making people feel very close to one another, we have to make some distances, okay? And therefore, we don't share together one plate. So let's quickly uh, summarize this thing. What do I mean we don't share together one plate? Let's say you're making polo. Very, very nice food, okay? You don't put one plate to both of you and you share from it. You serve to each and one people of, of you know, the household or whatever uh, their own plates. Or, if you insist, you can put one big central plate, but everybody takes to their own plate. Mm -hmm. Same with salads. Everybody takes to their own plate. People don't share the same cup of tea or cup of Coke. People don't share... Uh, everybody, uh, not the same uh, sli slice of uh, uh, cake or uh, ice cream. Everyone takes to their own and they eat. Because eating together makes people get closer. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's uh, summarize this, and we will be able to continue next time with other laws. Um, when you eat together and you are nida, it's a good sign to do. It's not a must from the Torah, but it's a good sign to do to make a signature between you, uh, some kind of a sign between you and your husband that you are nida. It could be that you put this uh, this uh, orange juice in the, in the middle of the table. This is your sign. It could be a certain vase of flowers. It could be uh, changing the different, you putting different placements or different uh, cover or change uh, the pl where you see it. It could be whatever. It's between you and him only. If you sit with people, you don't need this thing. Just mm -hmm. whenever you're alone. And you just have you to have to change the suit. Hmm? I must, told you, it's not a must, way. but it's a good thing to do. It's, it's like a reminder, basically. That you are huh? You're not allowed to say that. You're, you're allowed to say that you're only done. But for both of you, it's kind of a reminder. You know, today I put this kind of uh, a flowers on the table just uh, for us to remind because people get eating close can ma make people feel so food, food could be so romantic sometimes. You know, we make an atmosphere, certain music, certain candles, certain. Yeah. Are you allowed to drink wine together? Mm -hmm. Together? Yeah. When you're Nida? Yeah. You can bring the wine to the table and he will serve yeah. himself. No problem. And uh, for me. He can, he can. No, it's just she cannot pour for him. But you don't pour, pour him, him, but mm. you can have it on the table. Mm. But he can pour for him. We will talk about this later about wine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. It's a lot. Let's say he insists that he wants some um, wine on the table. It's okay. Okay. It's never good to drink too much. <laughs> no matter if you are there. But, uh, so, um, uh, leftovers. Man, a uh, woman is allowed to eat her husband's leftovers. Not a problem. A woman, okay, a man, yeah. a man uh, if he knows that this f leftover is from his wife, he's not allowed to eat this leftover mm. because anything that is hers, okay, it makes, again, as we don't understand why he gets excited or what, this is this one of these things, it makes something to him that he knows that it is yours. So if you, let's say, just touched the piece of cake, you want to finish it, you want to throw it, you can cut it nicely so you won't see mm -hmm. that anybody ate from it, put it in a different plate, it's a new dish, it's, it's, it's not yours anymore. Mm -hmm. So this way he can uh, eat that piece of the... Same with food, you made this palov, let's say again, and you just tasted it and you don't want to throw it, put it in a different plate, arrange it nicely, add some rice, add some chicken, it's a new dish, it's not... It's not that he, because you touch it, you cannot, it's, it's knowing that it was yours, this is the problem, okay? So this is about uh, uh, leftovers, and um, let's say the wife uh, left uh, a piece of cake, and she went to work. She's going to come just in the evening. They say it's not a problem that he eats the leftovers, because she's not there anymore. He's not, he's not feeling that excited. It's it's not, because of, uh, because not because she's Nida. Not because she's Tmea. Because, because, yeah, okay. wanted, uh, because it's hers and uh, he feels something towards it. And uh, so the rabbi here mentions a few things uh, when it's allowed to eat leftovers. This is regarding food. Okay. Um, that's a shame. We're going to continue. Ah, but this uh, central plate. Let's say you eat by people. You're invited to your mother-in-law and she puts this central plate, whether it's food, whether it's fruits, whether it's anything, okay? If you're with people, it's not a problem that you all eat from that same central plate, even though it's better that you, everybody puts to their own plate, mm -hmm. it's, it's the best thing, okay? But even if they don't, it's okay to eat from that central plate as long as you don't touch with your forks, with your hands, and, and whatever. Because, uh, you know, among people, he doesn't think only about you, you don't think about him. It's so much easier. This is, is it okay to serve? Like, um, you take from the center plate and you put it on his plate and his plate? And yeah, all not, a the time. not a problem. Mm -hmm. Not a problem at all. To not serve. A to serve is not a problem. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah? More questions? Okay, but that's I'll see you next week. We're going to continue talking about this Hachakot. Uh, Thank you so much. God bless you. What's the topic called? Hachakot means distances. Yeah, distances.